Hey guys, Dr. Ben here. Wanted to make a video about the flu block vaccine, the egg-free flu vaccine, and just my thoughts on it. This is not a video telling you whether you should or should not get it. I just want to review um, some of the science behind uh, its safety, its efficacy, and whether or not it's vegan, because I've seen uh, a lot of posts on these vegan groups saying, oh, I got the egg-free flu vaccine, I got the flu block vaccine, and um, so I guess there's this misconception out there that it's vegan, so I want to address that first. Um, so as you may or may not know, the regular flu vaccine uses chicken embryo cells, um, essentially to culture the virus, because it's a virus, uh, the flu virus infects humans, it also infects uh, birds and pigs, you may have heard the swine flu, the bird flu, so they use uh, chicken cells to culture the virus. I mean, essentially, you can't feed it peanut butter or some plant-based food. It has to, it's a virus, it infects uh, animal cells, so you gotta feed it animal cells. So animal cells are used not only in the manufacturing to make it, but are in the actual drug that's injected into you. So if you, um, you know, not only is animals being exploited in the process, but they're also injecting the animal cells into you, which, you know, if you're a vegan or almost anybody, you might be uncomfortable with that idea. So. And then, of course, there's other concerns about the traditional flu vaccine, uh, the thimerosal in it, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, but you should know that the flu block vaccine, the egg-free flu vaccine, has worm cells in it. And I really did not believe this. Uh, I, I mean, I had no idea that it did until I essentially went on the flu block website and read the, the data sheet on it. So, and everything I'm going to pull up today is from that data sheet. So this is from the manufacturer, from the horse's mouth. So hopefully they're telling us the truth. Um, I'm going to assume that they must be. Uh, the, the truth is not very pretty, as you'll come to find out. But let's share this information. So the egg-free flu vaccine still has worm cells in it. So if you're a vegan, um, it's really not a step in the right direction. You're still essentially exploiting animals. Now, you could argue that, uh, you know, some sort of speciesist argument that would rather harm a worm than a chicken, but at the end of the day, you're still harming animals. And, and the thing is, veganism is essentially an attempt at doing as little harm as possible. So if you feel the need, if you think you really need the flu vaccine or it's right for you, and I'm not here to um, you know, do anything but present data to you to help you make that decision, um, then you know, if that's where you're willing to make a compromise or feel that you need to, to, you know, that you need to do this harm um, for the sake of your own health, uh, then you, know, you should have the freedom to do that. I think that that's, that's fair. Um, personally, I, I don't. I don't think that, um, that uh, the, the benefits are worth the risk and the harm. And we'll get into why. But ultimately, I want you to make your own decision. So, so we've established that the vaccine is essentially not vegan. Even if you say that the cell lines are immortalized, that they're not harming any new worms, eh, you know, it's, it's, you're still injecting yourself with animal cells. Um, so, and I don't even really think that whether the, the vaccine is vegan or not is, is my main concern. My main concern is the safety and the efficacy. So safety being, will the vaccine harm you regardless of whether it helps you? And then um, the efficacy, does the vaccine actually help you? And so these two things are not tied together. So a vaccine could help you and harm you. It's very possible, or it could do neither. Um, the, the flu vaccine now in 2018, the traditional one with the egg and the thimerosal has a 10% efficacy, which is pretty abysmal. That's pretty bad. That basically means that it increases, decreases your chance of getting the flu by 10%, which is, I mean, if there were no harm to it and no risks, I mean, why not? But there's definitely harm, uh, especially with the traditional flu vaccine. It has an ingredient called thimerosal, which um, is essentially a rebranding of mercury. Thimerosal is 49% mercury by weight, and you can look this up on the CDC website that it's in the traditional flu vaccine. This is not, um, this is not pseudoscience. It's in there. And, um, and so, of course, people are freaked out at the idea that there's mercury in vaccines, so you repackage it with some other chemicals and you call it thimerosal, and it sounds nicer, right? But, um, and then, of course, there's the argument that, well, essentially, it's the safe kind of mercury, that it's ethyl mercury, and that it dissipates from the blood faster, and this is what the CDC claims on their website. But if you actually look into the science of, of mercury, I mean, come on, guys, let's be honest. Like, the idea that there's, a safe, there's one safe kind of mercury and just happens to be the one that's in vaccines, I mean, that's, that's a bit of a stretch. Um, and so the study shows that essentially the methylmercury dissipated from the blood faster than the ethylmercury, so the methylmercury must be safe. But there's this thing called accounting, where you have to basically show where the toxin went. Because just as it disappears from the blood doesn't mean that they peed it out, they pooped it out, they puked it out, they sneezed it out. Um, 
we don't, it, the study doesn't show where it went. So was it in the blood? Where did it go? Well, there was uh, a toxicologist, PhD toxicologist by the name of Thomas Burbacher. And I'll put a link to his study. It's famously called the Burbacher study, wherein he looked at where does the mercury go? And he injected a bunch of um, primates with uh, thimerosal and also had another group that used uh, methylmercury. And he looked at, uh, he essentially autopsied them them. So he, yes, he harmed animals in this experiment to show what was going on and found that the methylmercury, although it disappeared from the blood faster, it didn't leave the body. And in fact, it accumulated much more so in the brain. And so as we know, the term mad as a hatter that these, um, you know, hatters who used a lot of mercury went insane. Mercury is not something you want accumulating in your brain. And so this, you know, essentially implicates it in a whole bunch of, um, you know, neurological problems. Um, but you won't find the Burbacher study on the CDC website for some reason. Hmm, I don't know. They just have their one study that shows it disappears in the blood, but the one study that shows that it accumulates in the brain, that's just, we don't talk about that. So, obviously, with the flu buck vaccine, if you're not getting the mercury, it would seem like it would be a safer bet. So, let's look at the data. So, if we look at the efficacy data, it's more efficacious than the current flu vaccine, which is great. Okay. Um, somewhere between 30 to 50% effective. Again, you know, it's not like, honestly, that's not impressive to me. Maybe that's impressive to you. Uh, it's better than nothing. It's certainly better than 10%. Um, but uh, it's not great. But hey, you know, it kind of works, right? Um, so then you have to consider the risks, right? Because there are the benefits that it may help, but um, there are risks. And so if we look at the data sheet here, we can see them. So um, one thing we'll just look at, and this is on the very first page of the data sheet here. And so it says that um, warnings, uh, contraindication, severe allergic reaction, i.e. anaphylaxis to any component of the vaccine, i.e. any ingredient in the vaccine that you know that makes you give you an anaphylactic re reaction, don't get the vaccine, right? That's what the, 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 the uh, manufacturer is telling you. So I can just see somebody like clipping that sound bite out of the context, don't get the vaccine. I'm not here to tell, here to tell you to do or do not get the vaccine. I'm just here to you know, essentially inform you what I've learned because it was ra rather disconcerting. And so what also it says is that, um, warns, if Guillain-Barre syndrome has occurred within six weeks of receipt of a prior influenza vaccine, the decision to give flu block quadrivalent should be based on careful consideration of potential benefits and risks. I'd agree. So for those of you who aren't familiar what, uh, <laughs> with Guillain-Barre syndrome, it's essentially paralysis. And um, so all of a sudden you can't move your legs. And so sometimes it's transient, it comes and goes, and sometimes it doesn't go, i.e. you become paralyzed. So it's kind of strange that they would just mention, oh, have you been paralyzed by a vaccine before? You might not want to get another one. Well, what, are you, what if it's your first time? Do you know whether or not you'll get paralysis? That's a little disconcerting. I mean, if the chances, I mean, and then it's like, well, what's the risk? Is it, you know, 0.1%? Is it one in 10,000, one in 100,000, one in a million? We don't know. It's not here. It's mentioned, they have to mention that Guillain-Barre could be a side effect, but they don't want to tell you, like, the probability of that. So that's disconcerting, right? Okay, so adverse reactions. So it says um, uh, injection site, tenderness, pain, um, adverse systemic reactions such as headache and fatigue and then in adults 50 years or older um, common same reactions but also systemic um, fatigue headache um, arthralgia and myalgia also happened in young people which is muscle pain and joint pain and they don't say if it was just the day after or for the rest of your life as in they don't really tell you they just say as you know a uh, 13% chance that you're going to get myalgia, which is not really a diagnosis. It's just muscle pain. It doesn't really say the severity or the intensity or how long it lasts or if it's permanent or whatever. To report suspected adverse reactions, contact Protein Science Corporation or VAERS, the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, which is essentially the government, to tell them that you had a bad reaction because the manufacturer doesn't care they don't have to care because in the United States, the government granted pharmaceutical companies immunity for any 
adverse reactions caused by a vaccine, i.e. you can't sue them for damages. So vegans have heard of cheeseburger laws where you can't sue McDonald's for making you obese and diabetic and having heart disease. Well, it's the same. We have cheeseburger laws for vaccines where you can't sue the manufacturer if the drug harmed you. You have to sue the government. So my tax dollars, your tax dollars, have to pay for people who are harmed by these drugs and the multi-billion pharmaceutical companies which make money hand over fist don't have to pay a dime. That's disconcerting to me, but moving on. Anyway, so if we look at some of the ingredients, um, so we know about the worms, right? Um, we also have um, sodium phosphate, uh, monobasic and dibasic, as well as polysorbate 20. Um, so I looked it up and there's definitely concerns about um, polysorbate 20, especially most of it's in makeup, that um, it's, a, it's a synthetic ingredient, it's, it's causing skin irritation, and they also found that it caused reproductive issues in uh, animal tests, but um, hasn't so far in human tests. Um, so that's, you know, there's definitely risks that look, polysorbate 80 is a lot worse. This was the ingredient in the anthrax vaccine, definitely implicated in something called Gulf War syndrome, which we won't get into, but uh, definitely highly toxic, polysorbate 80, polysorbate 20, somewhat toxic, I don't know. And a lot of these sites say, well, you know, systemic safety data, it doesn't exist. And so then if we look at the, um, if we look at uh, the safety studies that they actually did, um, it's, it's rather disconcerting how, um, how bad they were because the drug is not tested against a true placebo. It's tested essentially the same drug with the virus inactivated. So the polysorbate 20, the, the um, sodium phosphate, all the other ingredients are still in there. So if those ingredients cause any sort of harm or adverse reaction, you wouldn't know because you didn't control for it because it wasn't, you didn't inject them with water as placebo. You injected them with almost the exact same drug with the virus inactivated. So is the polysorbate 20 or the money, <laughs> sodium phosphate toxic? Well, we don't know because we don't have anything to compare it to. So like, is the drug safe? Uh, I, I don't know because the, the, we don't, didn't use the true placebo. The, and the other thing is that the um, study only looked at uh, adverse reactions after 28 days and six months. So if you develop some adverse reaction a year down the line, so we don't have long-term safety studies to know if it's safe. It's also been never tested in combination with any other vaccine. So is it safe? I don't know. I don't think the data is very good. I, so that raises concerns. So, um, you know, maybe it's safe, maybe it's not. I, we don't have enough data to know. Um, and that's disconcerting to me. So I think I've provided enough information for you guys to make a decision for yourself. Um, again, it's personal choice. Um, unfortunately, in the state of California, um, you know, the government has decided that uh, it's not a personal choice and that if you're uh, a child that you must be vaccinated or face penalties, which I think is rather unconstitutional, but um, you know, that's the way it is. So make your own decision. Go to the Flu Block website. If you don't believe me, go to the CDC website. Look this stuff up yourself. Read the Burbacher study. Educate yourself. And then make your own decision. And honestly, I'd rather just you have make an educated decision than an uneducated decision. Um, so hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. You can also follow me on Facebook, Dr. Benjamin Benulis. Putting out a lot of content on health, wellness, diet, nutrition, that kind of thing. And I really enjoy making these videos. So share this video and let other people know. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.